What's up, everybody? It's Melvin here. Uh, today, draft night in New Orleans. Um, Y'all gonna ride with me while I got some last minute errands. I gotta get ready for this big night tonight. Oh, we at Avondale, Kennedy Heights. Where I grew up at, my neighborhood. We moved back here since I was in the second grade. That's where it all started. Growing up around here, I mean, I wouldn't say it's bad, I wouldn't say it's good. It's kind of was like in between. But you know, I kind of maintained, stayed away from trouble, so I always had my own route. I'm always active, so always into sports, just sports in general. Just being active, doing something positive. Heading into the gym. Uh, this kind of where it all started at in this gym right here. Kind of had the key to the gym. My mama used to always come get me from out here. Always. Every day. Almost every day she came. Try to get me. What? She's out here playing basketball, that's all. But some of those sports he played growing up, what some of those saw, trophies might be? He used to play bas uh, baseball and, uh, foot and uh, basketball at, at Higgins. Okay. Okay, and that's the first home run ball you hit. My mom and my stepdad and my dad, like, pretty much did anything, anything possible, like, whatever it takes for me, just to be happy and successful, you know, they did it. And I really appreciate them for that. I mean, I done traveled the whole world with basketball, so like, I done been to almost every state in the United States. Basketball took, a, took me a long ways, I never thought. I, mean, I done seen things that I thought I'd never see. Uh, we're off to the barbershop. Barbershop, barbershop. What's the name of the barbershop? Ground Zero. I've been going here since seven, eighth grade. You know, just he just always come through for me whenever I need a haircut. So he's been my barber ever since then. And he's got a good relationship. That I get that off of Mickey Mouse, man. But Mickey Mouse got two. But you know, I got a lot of hair, so I did the four. They always told me, you know, if I just take it more serious, you know, I got a good chance. People always seen it in me. But I just had to see it for myself. And as time went by, you know, I just started taking it more serious. I didn't get into the travel lead until like after my ninth grade, yeah. Ninth, summer, 10th grade, yeah. 11th, 10th grade, 12th grade, yeah. Started getting recruited. Just, it was a lot at the time, but you know, I had people in my corner helping me out. We in middle school, this is probably like six, six or seven grade. They had like the teacher and they had like a teacher assistant in there. We shoot spitballs back and forth. I always see them on TV, but like we actually in class like doing it. I hit him like two or three times before he responded. <laughs> so he shot a couple back at me and one and one he shot at me, he missed and hit the teacher assistant oh, on the forehead. Right now, I'm going to the mall, get some shoes, probably a t-shirt or something. I need to put some shoes on, I got some slippers on, so I'm really gonna go get me some shoes for sure. Shoes, I would say, I like Jordans, but Jordans and Nikes. I just like wearing like gravity tees, jogging pants, and Levi's, really. I 
I listen to rap music. Uh, just like hype stuff, me. What's the most embarrassing music you listen to? I would have to say my country music. Ah, okay. Who's your favorite country artist? Uh, Zach Brown. And the radio world. Going to Company Burger downtown in the city. I want this fried chicken sandwich. I right, you need some tater tots too. Tater tots and onion rings. All right. Some drink. I got my junior right here. Got Gary Collins. It was your uh, funniest story or a memory you have of Melvin growing up. <clears throat> the funniest one that I can remember right now was. When we played baseball, I want to say who was what? 11, 12. And what happened was, we was getting into this the whole game, the whole game, like in the middle of the field, we was fussing, going back and forth. He talking about my mom, I'm talking about his mom, and I was playing catch up. So it was my turn to go up the bat, and I struck out. So it was his turn to go up the bat. And all I remember was, he hit the home run, and everybody was just screaming so happy. I was in the dugout. <laughs> He was like the first person I think that year to hit, hit that home run because like, the park was so big. I think we rolled together and we was trying to wait for him. He wanted him to autograph balls and stuff. Try to yeah, we was, I, was, I was really good. I, was like, <laughs> I, I didn't even want to talk to him. Like, I, I didn't have nothing else to say. I was just so shocked that he hit that home run. I didn't have a problem with going away from home, but turns out that I stayed home and it did good for me. Good fit, you know, kind of set me down. This is what I need to work at. As my numbers show, like each year, everything improved. And now the game is so slow to me, like I just see like stuff before it happens. In the second half, we did a much better job moving the ball against zone. We made some good finds, Mel. Good ball fake. He was a big part of it too, you know. Coming from the NBA, he knew a lot of stuff. He came in with some little tweaks and stuff like that and it helped me even more. Break away! Don't get home, baby! I just know that I can get the crowd excited and like when the crowd excited, the team going good. So like they kind of kept us going and stuff. So just really appreciate the crowd, the fans, the students, the alums, everybody. Most people don't get this type of chance. So I mean like if you're good enough and you put the work into it, you know, you can do it like anything's possible. Like I said, like coming up from New Orleans, like it's, you know, it was rough, but like I said, I always, I took the different route. People had seen that I took the different route and pushed me to take that route and to be better than what they was and don't want me to follow the same route they took. So like I was here to support. I had a good support, not from like my family, just like people in general, like around me. Back to the West Bank, shoot a little pool. It's my little spot where I go, chill out, relax. Pool probably don't seem interesting to people until like they really play themselves. It's about like you gotta have a touch, a certain type of feel for the game. Like just make you all it's like a good winning game, it make you wanna win. It's just challenging and like, you know. Just make you want to get better. It's a very challenging game. Make you think. It's a thinking game too. Kind of like chess. You know which shots to take, which shots not to take. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Jones. Coming up over the next couple of days, we'll have eight hours of continuous coverage on ESPN2, also on the ESPN app. The scrimmages, the cogent numbers, all the important storylines heading up to the draft June 23rd in Brooklyn. Got to watch here is Melvin Frazier Jr. Yeah. from uh, Tulane. The question is, is he going to be able to consistently knock down perimeter shots? Most people just really don't know who I am and people don't think that I'm good as I am. So I just say it like, you don't know who I am, you will know soon. As it showed, you know who Melvin Frazier is now. We've got one of the stars from scrimmage number two, Melvin Frazier. 
hometown, Avondale, Louisiana, goes to Tulane and had 14 points in the scrimmage. And he's sweating a little bit on set because we literally just pulled him off the court. <laughs> I mean, the combine went good for me. So I just went out and played and just did what I usually do. You know, I played defense, so he's seen his defensive part and it kind of just got a glimpse of my offensive side. It's like stuff that they didn't really see me doing. I mean, I didn't put in the work, so I mean, I'm not really nervous or nothing right now. I mean, it's not hitting me yet, but I know I put in the work on time, so just whatever happens, happens. I can't control what it what does now, you know? Good evening, and welcome to the 2018 NBA Draft at Barclays Center, home of the Brooklyn Nets. Every pick matters, so let's get started. The Magic took Melvin Frazier, a guy that Jay had talked about earlier, having really improved his game out of Tulane. I just, I don't know how to describe this feeling really, but, you know, just thankful for my family I had here, family and friends. Blessed to play with Orlando Magic. 